Ladies and gentlemen, Sanjita here, uh, and I'm bringing to you my new and revised free play guide for the middle of 2023. Changed with the crate raid and the raid system overhaul in mind. A lot of things have changed, so let's get into it. I am covering the same subject matter that I did in my previous guide uh, with a lot of expansions within each area. What we're covering are free to play objectives for this game, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. The recommended order you should go through the journey guide. Uh, we're going to be talking about guild content, crystal management and ships, resource management in general, your core non-galactic legend squads, and other tips for success in the game at large. So what are the main objectives we have as a free player in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes at this point in time? Uh, first of all, I think it's just to have fun. The game is a marathon game. It takes a long time to do anything. It's definitely a grindy game, so it's not your type of game. Uh, if that's not your thing, it might not be your game. But try to unlock your favorite characters, not just the best possible characters, and you'll find it much more enjoyable. Uh, you want to take advantage of every resource available to you. If you want to play this game casually or competitively, that's a must. Um, if this is a resource management game at its heart. Uh, and there's plenty of different resources to juggle. I hope this guide helps with that, but that is going to be a massive priority. You also want to join the best guild you possibly can. There's a lot of community in this game. It makes it a lot of fun comparing progress and uh, sharing experiences with others that play this game. Um, it's a great feeling. Uh, also, focus on ships for crystals. That's just very direct. You need to build up your ships. Uh, you don't get as many crystals from land character, just the base characters. Um, for a while, so definitely do ships. And don't skip my ship section. Go to that uh, later in the video. Also, do not chase Galactic Legends immediately. You do need to build up some other teams. It takes, even if you rush and do nothing else than try to get a Galactic Legend, it's going to take months and months. Uh, so try to make sure you get some other good characters along the way before then. So the question you're probably asking is, it's only been five months and you made a free-to-play farming guide for a game that takes years to get anywhere. What has changed? Um, most people, if you play this game already, they know the crate raid changed, uh, the whole raid system changed with rewards, and so many other things came with it. Completely changed around Galactic Legends value, which ones you might want to go for first. Availability of key characters makes certain farms more feasible than they were before. Farming location changes have made certain characters harder to get, which might flip the switch on what you actually want to go for. And then character accelerations. Um, it's just a lot of things have changed. So a demands that I make an update uh, with only five months dated on my first guide. Now we get to the first and most important part of the guide. Uh, most people will consider this the entire free to play farming guide, but it is not. There's a lot more to get to. This is the journey guide order. The journey guide is all legendary characters and characters that take a lot of different characters to unlock themselves. You don't just farm them directly. And this is my guide that get you through this early stages of the game and try to get the best characters you can. We got to have a couple priorities first. I'm going to show all three of them. Um, what has changed from my last guide, I took out Phoenix, um, which is going to delay Thrawn, but you can still get Palpatine. And there's a couple reasons why I changed that. One, Harrison Dula is on a normal energy node now, and she's harder to get. Uh, and two, this raid currency makes you able to farm Han Solo and General Kenobi way faster than you could before, giving you super solid squads for Jedi and Rebels early on. Uh, and I don't think you're going to need those Phoenix characters to get the key things done and Thrawn will come later. Uh, so what we're looking at first here, Yoda, Palpatine, and R2-D2. They're all unlocked at five stars and they're all unlockable with just a single faction, um, any character within the faction. So you have a lot of leeway of who you choose to unlock these characters with. And these are the characters I am recommending you do. We've got Mace Windu, he's in the squad arena store, General Kenobi in the raid store and this is going to be a high priority for him and han solo they are top 20 characters there you're fantastic you're going to want to farm them unlock kenobi a five star then han solo a five star then finish off kenobi to seven and han to seven and you're in a great spot to begin it's just unbelievable uh also ahsoka tano and old ben uh, they're farmed in different locations you get ahsoka tano in the cantina store then you want to get stormtrooper han to help you with um uh, Palpatine. I recommend the Jedi first because it's going to make a more cohesive team uh, to get through early game stages with. These re this Rebel team, it's mostly about unlocking Commander Luke Skywalker later, um, but a lot of them are bad except for Han Solo. And so you want to have minimal investment in these. Um, Anakin Skywalker is amazing. This is Jedi Knight Anakin. You're going to get him with normal energy. 
You can get Ahsoka with the normal energy, but you probably want to just stick with a Cantina. And Old Ben, you can get with some of the raid currency and a Cantina store. And if you're having a slow time with Anakin, because normal energy, it takes longer to farm with, you can go ahead and grab Luminara Unduli from the Galactic War store. That's easy. Uh, and then this Palpatine squad. Again, a lot of these characters are bad. Biggs is bad, but he is a ship. Uh, Princess Leia is bad. Uh, Stormtrooper Han is not a priority. Han Solo is the one you really want to pour resources into to get this Palpatine team. And then when you get Palpatine, you're going to run him with Darth Vader, who won't show up on this first screen, but he is important. And then R2-D2. You need R2-D2 to unlock Commander Luke Skywalker. Um, and the team you're going to use to unlock R2-D2 is Imperial Troopers. Now, my first guide, I did recommend farming Imperial Troopers fast, but they weren't on this first screen, so a lot of people missed it. Uh, I have a guide, a, a page later in the guide, uh, where I talk about your farming order priorities for each resource. And Imperial Troopers are very high on that resource. So you can just unlock R2-D2 with the Imperial Troopers. Um, if you have Palpatine ready, he can help you get uh, R2 to 5 star, 7 star. Um, but to unlock Commander Luke Skywalker, it's different. You need these exact five characters all at 7 stars to unlock him. And when you have him and Han Solo together, that starts to be an amazing team. Uh, the reason I don't have Farm by Luke up here is because he is... Uh, a terrible character and you might as well use your cantina energy on other characters early and come back to farm boy Luke in a little bit uh, but these these four unlocks are going to give you a great team to begin with however one caveat is while I have Mace list as the leader in this Jedi team you want to use Basila Shan as the leader for pretty much every game mode other than unlocking Yoda uh, she'll just take longer to farm which is why she's not good for the unlock at high stars, but she is an amazing character at low stars. Now the second half of this page, we're starting out with Jedi Knight Revan. Jedi Knight Revan has moved way further up. I think he was item number 8 before in my old guide. Um, it's going to take some time to farm these characters with normal energy, but Bastila and Jolie are really early priorities. You want to be farming them at the same time you're farming everything over here because they're going to make for the best Jedi team. Uh, early you can have Bastila Jolie, uh, General Kenobi, like Anakin and maybe Mace. Um, you're going to have a great Jedi team early. Um, you also need Mission and Zalbar uh, for this unlock but they're bad characters so just minimal gear on them. They're the ones that you can put gear 8. Uh, you can put Bastil and Jolie at the higher gear. And then T3, not a great character early, so just minimal investment on him. He's the only Cantina character needed for this. Uh, but Old Republic is a faction you can use in the crate raid. Uh, so that's why we're moving him up faster. Uh, so you might be able to get some hits on that raid because uh, there's not many factions that can participate. Uh, the number six item we're going for is Chewbacca. He's going to fit great onto that team with Commander Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. And you need bounty hunters to unlock him. And bounty hunters are very important uh, for a variety of things. Uh, you can get your credit heist, your training droids with them. Uh, they count as scout because they count as scoundrels. And it's just a great team in general. And with Grief Karga and Mando, uh, original Mandalorian, it's just amazing. Because the Mandalorian has an insta-kill uh, when you get your contract with bounty hunters. So they're a fantastic team. A little bit more challenging of an event. Uh, but it's worth the gear on all these characters. Uh, next, this is um, kind of a, its own thing, but you're going to be working on Geonosians for ships. So you're going to have a lot of Separatists worked on there. You're going to have Jango Fett, which is a uh, holdover from the Bounty Hunters, unlocking Chewbacca. He's in a great spot, and you can run them under Newt Gunray, and you should be able to unlock Padme. And by that time, if you have Revan, he can be a Jedi leader for non-Galactic Republic. And Padme leads a Galactic Republic Jedi team with Anakin, Ahsoka, General Kenobi, um, and some others. But I'll show you that in a second. And then the last one on this page is Darth Revan. And I put the optional flag here. He doesn't fit well into um, the later stages of this guide. And also, I am delaying Malak hardcore. We are not going to get Malak for a long time. And also, Malgus, Darth Malgus, is needed to make this team its best. And it's going to take a very long time to get him. Um, if I was going through, I'd probably still get Darth Revan because I love Darth Revan and Bastila. And HK together are fantastic. Um, and it's not too hard of an event. Uh, you only really need to gear up the great characters. Uh, but you might want to skip him if you're going for optimal efficiency and pursuing your late game goals.
So now that we have this whole screen in view, uh, these early priorities, uh, you might have put together that there are four main factions we're focusing on early. We are focusing on Jedi, Empire, Rebels, and Bounty Hunters. And that's going to be a theme that continues throughout this guide and it's going to help you achieve a lot of different things which we'll see along the way and separatists are there as well uh that's more for a ship side of things for lap for ground game it's all about those four factions so i've been talking about it throughout that past screen but i just wanted to show your target squads early to show what you're actually going to use um the only thing i'd point out like i did before is basila early on you're going to want her to be the leader before you get revan but once you get revan you can split up uh, her and padme uh, you can split this up into a Galactic Republic and a Jedi team. Uh, Commander Luke Skywalker, you're going to have to get C-3PO and 3PO and Chewie later. Uh, but this is the end goal uh, for this team. Uh, early on, you're going to have the core three, Commander Luke, Han, and Chewie, which is going to be fantastic. Bounty Hunters, very flexible, but Bosk is uh, a lead priority, and he also has the best ship in the game. Imperial Troopers are a super early team that are going to be amazing. You might want to give one of your first Zetas to Admiral Piet, which we'll talk about later. And then Geonosians, uh, once you can get the Geonosian Brood Alpha, this is an insane early game team, uh, even at low gear. So don't sleep on that. And then this didn't appear at all in the first screen, but we're going to have Palpatine leading Vader. And then if you can pick up Mara Jade, she works fantastic. Even if she's low stars, her abilities are just insane with uh, Emperor Palpatine. And then if you did decide to pick up Darth Revan, you can run him, Basila, HK-47, with two Sith or Sith Empire characters. Um, and also with the Palpatine team, you can throw in any two Empire characters at the end. Uh, maybe Tarkin, because you're going to need him for ships, and TIE Fighter Pilot, maybe early. Uh, but later, or I'll show you the finished squad you actually want at the end game later. Uh, but there's just some good early squads to be working on that are not a waste of resources at all. And now we get to the part where you can start to see how I've accelerated this guide. We have the executor already. No second screen of journey guide characters to farm. Because uh, you don't need any other than Beskar Mando. Uh, you're going to need Beskar Mando to pilot the Razor Crest. But these are all the ships you're going to need. It's a combo of Empire ships and Bounty Hunter ships. Uh, which you should have most of the pilots up and ready uh, from unlocking Chewbacca. IG-88, you're going to have to work on him on his own, but he's an easy farm from the Squad Arena store. And these ships, as you're going to see later, are a very high priority for farming. Houndstooth especially, you're going to use it in any single fleet you run until even up to Executor. It's always going to be one of the best tanks in the game. So you're going to have to farm all these ships to 7 stars. It's kind of a grind, but you don't need to use gear, so it's nice. Um, but also, you're going to need several characters relic up. And if you're new to the game, relic levels are character progression mechanics that happen after you apply all gear onto your character to gear level 13. That's the last gear level. And then you start applying using a combination of signal data, which you farm with Cantina Energy, and relic material scrap, which comes from a variety of gear that you scrap down. Um, we've, I've already talked a little bit about Darth Vader. He's amazing. You can get him in the Fleet Arena store and also in some achievements, so it shouldn't take too long. I'm sure we have been working on Admiral Piet, Bosk, and Boba Fett as part of your Bounty Hunter and Imperial Trooper teams. Uh, then TIE Fighter Pilot, uh, he's, he's got a good ship, so you can make use of that in the meantime. IJ-88, not going to be great until you actually unlock the Executor and use his ship. And then Dengar. He's a battery hunter. Um, I don't really use him anymore, but he's, he's decent. Uh, you get him from the guild store, uh, and you can also get him with that new tier one raid currency. If that's how you get Executor. You're going to unlock it at four stars. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to be well worth it. It's going to take several months, maybe like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months, uh, depending on how efficient you are in the game. Uh, but it is definitely a high priority. It is kind of like a Galactic Legend sh ship. Uh, it can beat um the the radis which is technically the best ship in the game there's a new capital ship coming out sometime this year but we don't know anything about that hopefully this still beats it but as of now fleet arena is so important you want to make sure this is your priority to get those fleet arena crystals also in the meantime while you're farming executor you're probably going to be able to pick up the millennium falcon which is an amazing ship you should already have han solo and chewbacca to pilot it it unlocks at five stars so just pick it up as soon as you can that's why i have it around number nine which is before executor 
Um, and then the only thing you need to farm extra is Cad Bane ship uh, with normal energy. You're going to want that by the time you unlock Executor anyway, but it is not technically required for Executor, so make sure you don't miss that ship. And now here is the punchline of the whole guide for me. Once you unlock Executor, you come to a crossroads. Do you want Java or do you want Sith Eternal Emperor? Uh, there's merits to each. Java is by far a better Galactic Legend, more valuable, usable in a lot of game modes, um, and has pretty much mandated usefulness from the from Capital Games, the developer of this game. Uh, but he is very difficult to get. It's going to take longer. But Sith Eternal Emperor, he's pretty easy to get if you already got Executor. There's a lot of overlap. However, he is less valuable. Uh, that being said, he's still a Galactic Legend. And I don't know. You're going to have to make a game time decision once you get Executor of which one you want to go for. Compare which one's further away, how long it'll take, and decide. Maybe you want to just pick up Sith Eternal before Java. Or if you're feeling a challenge, just go right for Java. In this section, I'm going to show you why it's going to take so long to unlock Jabba the Hutt. It's because you have a bunch of extra characters you need to finish off and unlock. Uh, you need to unlock C-3PO using Ewoks, and this is a hard event if you're trying to go with low gear. Ewoks are bad characters, probably the worst faction in the game, so that's why it's a hard trade-off to go for C-3PO. But you're going to need him to get Jabba the Hutt. Uh, you're going to need him to get Jaina Luke Skywalker, which is needed for Jabba. Uh, you get these Ewoks in a variety of sources. Um, Ewok Elder, you could probably get from opening your Bronze packs, which are basically free pack openings you get over time. Uh, but if you want to go for Jabba, you're going to have to start farming these as soon as you can. Um, C-3PO, he fits super well into that Commander Luke Skywalker team. He's part of the ideal team. Uh, and that team, you're going to have to get up to Relics for Jedi Knight Luke, and that is no sacrifice. Uh, these four characters here that are in the good category, this is no sacrifice at all. So that is why um, it's not a terrible idea to get Jedi Knight Luke and then Jabba. Um, you have a couple, when I say bad characters, Lando Calrissian and Captain Han Solo. They're not useful. They're not useful early, ever, and late. It takes, I don't know, an insane amount of effort to make them actually usable. Uh, so they're just kind of a waste. All these characters have, have to get to Relic 3, which takes a long time for a newer player. Uh, and the other thing that used to make this farm like a complete no-go was the fact that you need Wampa, Hermit Yoda, and Rebel Officer. Officer Leia Organa, which are gated behind territory battles and territory battle currency, so they're very slow. It would take previously maybe a year to 18 months to farm all these three. However, now with the raid overhaul, you can buy them with this Mark II raid currency. And you start getting this currency once you're in a guild that runs the Sith raid. I'll talk about raids in a second, but it can significantly, significantly accelerate these farms. Um, also, there's a Galactic Bounties event where you can get uh, Wampa and Rebel Officer Leia Organa and get some shards and speed up there. That requires bounty hunters. Another reason we want to focus on bounty hunters. Um, but out of these three, probably get Wampa unlocked at five star, Hermit Yoda unlocked at five star, and get Wampa to seven, Hermit Yoda to seven, and then start getting Rebel Officer Leia Organa with the tier two raid currency. If you already got her with just the uh, Guild Event 2 token, then you're great. Uh, but those characters take a long time to farm, which is a huge bottleneck. If you're, su you should start on them super early in the game with these currencies. I haven't showed these currencies earlier in the guide. You should exclusively lose use them for these characters. But if you're buying schedule, you might want to think about Sith Eternal Emperor instead of Jabba. So what you need to actually unlock Jabba the Hutt once you have Giant Luke and C-3PO is a Galactic Legend. So you need a ton of investment in characters and gear. Uh, there's some good characters. Han Solo, Jedi Knight Luke, no sacrifice at all to work up. Fennec Shand, amazing character as well. Boosh Leia uh, is going to go with the Java team once you're done. And C-3PO is a good character. He's kind of a waste at Relic 7 because the Relic levels don't really improve him at all. Uh, but those are good characters. You're also going to get some decent characters. You should already have Boba Fett ready from Executor, so that's great. This is Kersantan. He's going to work with Java at the end. Ara Singh. She's a decent leader, has a quick contract for Bounty Hunters. Uh, Skiffcart Lando, not going to be usable until you get Java, but goes with that team. And then the Outrider can fit well into a Rebel fleet if you have it, but you'd have to unlock uh, Dash Rendar, who will take extra time with uh, Cantina Energy. 
And then there's a few bad characters you're gonna get. These is these are the last priorities you want to gear up if you're going for Java. This is Gamorian Guard, Greedo, Jawa, er, 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 he's a Tuscan, and Mob Enforcer. Uh, they're not super hard farms. Um, you can get them with some squad arena currency, some raid currency, some energy for Jawa. Uh, but they're accelerated characters, which means you get two shards at a time. Also, Kersantan. Bush Leia and Skiffguard Lando are going to be accelerating soon in the next few months. So, the, but if you start with this guide, by the time you get to them, they will be faster farms than they were um, at the first time I made a guide. Another reason why it might be a good idea to go for Java, uh, but it is a steep climb to get there. However, it will be well worth it at the end. There's so many ways you can use this guide. So that is really what I think of as hard mode farming in this game. It's a steep climb. Uh, with a delayed payoff but a good one or if you want to if you want to go easier mode you're going to want to go for sith eternal emperor first instead of supreme leader kylo to me he's easier to get after executor and supreme leader kylo you don't need anymore because you don't need to solo the sith raid by yourself uh so that was a huge value for him still an amazing galactic legend and wouldn't be a terrible choice but i think sith eternal emperor is easier and there's a lot of characters you're already you have already been working on if you're following this guide uh, Darth Vader should be ready. Palpatine should be at a decent level. Anakin Skywalker is great. Admiral Piet and General Veers are important for that Imperial Trooper team. And this, uh, the TIE Bomber is good. I think you need that for Executor anyway, so you should already have that. And then Thrawn, this is where he kind of gets delayed in the guide. And now we have Phoenix come up. Um, later in the game, it's like, you don't want to go back and work on this team. They're not useful late after the very early game, they're not useful on, in their own right at all. Uh, but Gear 8 shouldn't be too much of an investment by this time. They're easy to farm in different locations. Uh, so just bite the bullet and get them. But you need Thrawn's 7 stars, so they will need to all be 7 stars. There's some decent requirements. Uh, Tarkin is going to have his own capital ship, so that won't be a waste at all. Uh, Royal Guard is a decent tank now. He got a rework after Lord Vader was announced way after Sith Eternal came out. So that has improved. Dooku is kind of annoying. You can run it with a Separatist team, which you'd have, you should have some by now. Very annoying character uh, for opponents. Sith Marauder will fit well into that Darth Revan team if you decide to farm it. Stark is part of your Imperial Trooper team. Uh, and there's only a few, I'd say, bad characters. Director Krennix is the worst. Uh, Darth Sidious, you need to get to Relic 7, which hurts because he's barely usable. Um, you can use him as a trash Sith with Sith Eternal Emperor. And then sadly, Darth Maul is not a good character in this game. Uh, he has a good version called Maul, but uh, he himself is not good, the original version. Um, and you see all the, the ways you farm all these characters. It's kind of a variety of sources, which means you should be able to farm the uh, shards to unlock them at seven stars pretty fast. And since you have so many ready already, that's why this is kind of an easier um, path to take. And it'll be much faster. You would do this before you'd get C-3PO and Jedi Knight Luke. Uh, and then only after you get him, you'd work on those characters. Now we're just kind of getting to the appendix of the Journey Guide farming order. Uh, after you get those two Galactic Legends, you kind of pick your path. Uh, Jedi Master, I would recommend getting another Galactic Legend over General Skywalker. Uh, General Skywalker is good. Um, you would pick up a General Grievous team. You kind of have this a lot of this Padme team ready already. But I recommend going for Malevolence in ships first, which means your Galactic Republic fleet might not be ready. Uh, so Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is amazing too. If you have Wat Tambor already, uh, you might want to go for Jedi Master Kenobi. But I would recommend one of these three Galactic Legends next. Not uh, Lord Vader or Rey, because they take longer. And, uh, I mean, Rey might not be terrible, but Lord Vader does take the longest, so I wouldn't recommend him next. But it's really up to you. I'm not going to dictate at this point. This section is not recommendations. These are just things that are kind of afterthoughts. They're like low level unlocks, but you might be able to pick them up if you start farming um, Jedi Master Luke or Supreme Leader Kylo. And then if you have your Phoenix up and ready, you might as well just unlock the Chimera. Uh, but these are not early priorities at all. Also, later priorities are Malak. Uh, so by the time you have unlocked Jedi Knight Luke, you might want to start working on Malak. It's pretty easy. If you got Darth Revan unlocked and Jedi Knight Revan, um, they're both Revans and their teams, you just need a little bit more develop on that, development on them. They don't need relics, so it'll be a little bit of a vacation from Galactic Legend farming. 
Um, also, Starkiller is amazing in um, Grand Arena, and all his characters are pretty great. I moved him much later in the guide because it's kind of an unrelated sojourn, and it takes a long time to get them, uh, so it's probably worth delaying. And then Inquisitors are definitely a late game priority. They're very important for very, very end game guilds. Um, but however, they take a while to farm and they're not really useful even after you unlock Grand Inquisitor here. And they're super useful until you unlock Third Sister through Territory Battle, which should take a while, uh, which means they are a pretty late priority. And now we are finally done with the Journey Guide section of this guide, uh, but it doesn't end there. Right here, we're looking at all guild content. So joining a great guild is a huge part of this game. It's very important for resources. In raids is what we're looking at first. Kind of the main reason I changed up this guide. Uh, you get various currencies to spend for the pit raid. And the, these are all for the heroic levels for these three. You're only going to get 1700 tier 1 currency. At least try to get in a guild that does the tank raid. I think it should be super easy to do that. This is not a hard raid, even for low level guilds uh, just need one good player um, you get a ton more currency this is going to help you get through General Kenobi, Han Solo, Darth Treya, and tons of other characters fast and get tons of gear and if you can definitely try to get in a heroic Sith raid um, this these rewards are almost as good as the rewards I get at the end game in a five almost 500 million galactic power guild so this is an enormous boost for lower game characters. However, you are going to need to be doing the Crate Dragon Raid, the end game raid, to get this tier 3 currency, which is needed to get arrow magnifiers, which is needed to get Relic 8 characters. And you need Relic 8 to unlock both Executor and Java. So uh, if you don't get it here, you're going to have to buy them with crystals, which could take a while as well. Uh, and this is a free to play guide. so. When you can, try to get to it. Just keep trying to move up in guilds or be part of a guild that is progressing towards these. Another guild event you're going to be doing are territory battles. Uh, these are like week-long events. It's a whole guild pitches in together. I'm not going to talk too much about it. You get a variety of resources. Uh, guild event tokens 1, 2, and 3. You get some crystals and some gear. And there's also special character unlocks, the best of which being... Uh, Reva the Inquisitor, second best being Wat Tambor, third being Kiati Mundi, a Jedi and Galactic Republic member. Um, it's just something, it, it's nice. It's a nice guild activity, it's kind of fun. The last major guild activity is Territory War. This is guild PvP. You got your guild versus another guild. You got the entire walls of defenses you set and you try to get through intact together. You get a few different things from this. You get Zeta materials for abilities. You get droid brains. Um, and that's way later. You have to be a huge guild for that. That helps you get Relic 9, um, thankfully, which is not required for anything in this guide yet. And you also get some of these other currencies here and some gear. Uh, but it, it's not a huge amounts from them. And they happen four times per four-week period. And the Crate Raid, the whole reason uh, for all this change, uh, only accepts five factions, Hut Cartel, Old Republic, Mandalorians, Jawas, and Tuscans. Jawas and Tuscans are not early game friendly. Mandalorians are hard because you need a conquest character, Maul, who takes at least 4 million galactic power to start even working on. Uh, so Old Republic and Hot Cartel are probably going to be your first uh, go-to teams. Uh, this is the team I recommend for Old Republic. Um, Sorty is a droid, like a kind of a catch-all droid leader, uh, which you should be able to make use of uh, to some degree. Um, you could also alternatively use Mission and Zalbar instead of these two. It's up to you. And then whenever at long last you unlock Jabba, you'll have the best team for the crate raid. Um, this is, if you only have this team, you're probably set to get your guild good rewards. However, you need R rates already before you do that. Um, they can improve your personal rewards if you're getting good uh, results. And I took this from a, a Reddit post. Someone put, just do the HSTR. Heroic Sith Triumvirate Raid, and I'm going to put Orge's Tank Raid. Uh, so in the meantime, you're going to get good rewards from those other raids, uh, but you do need to be working towards a Crate Raid Guild to get that Tier 3 currency to unlock your R8s and get those better endgame characters. Moving on to the Resource Management section of this guide, uh, Crystals are your main 
currency in this game. It's the lifeblood. It's the freemium currency. If you spend money, most of the time you just directly buy crystals and you buy all other things. Uh, you can get a few th a few of them every day through daily activities between 100 and 150. Uh, once you're level 85 and you join Grand Arena, you're going to get at minimum 55 crystals a day from there. And if you can get climb high in the fleet arena, you're going to get a lot of crystals there as well. So that's a huge priority. And I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, but if you start climbing high in fleet arena and unlock so much potential, uh, the way you want to use your crystals mainly as a new player, best way is energy refreshes. Uh, it might feel like weird because you're getting energy anyway. You get free energy. Uh, but it's the fastest way to progress. You want to prioritize the normal energy and the cantina energy. This is for mods. I don't talk a lot about mods in the game, but they modify your stats. Very important for a competitive uh, player. And even if you're just playing PvE content, you need good mods. And then ship refreshes as well. So uh, with this many crystals, you can manage a few refreshes of all these. Um, the more the better, up to three of each. And in the quest for these crystals, you're going to want to focus on your fleets early. They unlock at level 60. And the first fleet I'm recommending going for is the Executrix lead uh, target ship with Geonosian ships. These are easy to farm in the Galactic War store. Uh, so get them when you can. You can also get them with some fleet arena currency once you start getting it to speed that up. Uh, but they're great ships early and they fit well into your next fleet, which is the Malevolence fleet. Uh, the Malevolence fleet, I'd prefer you go for over Negotiator. They requires guild event two tokens um and it's gonna seamlessly transition these geonosians are separatists and then you have two pilotless ships here which you don't have to gear anyone up to use so it's a very low budget great team and you can take out the negotiator uh at a high level when you get high, high enough gear you can take out executor with it too so it is fantastic uh, and then by the time you get Executor, that is when you should for sure be trying to take number one in Arena to get these 400 crystals and work with your fleet Arena mates. Uh, just try to get in contact with them if you can, because there's room for 24 people in a shard to get uh, 400 crystals a day. I think those fleet Arena shards have about a thousand players and uh, not all of them are active. So it's a lot easier than it sounds to get a higher rank. So definitely focus on that a lot. Um, you also have some light side fleets. You're going to be able to be using Admiral Akbar with Hans Millennium Falcon when you get it. And then later, uh, especially if you go for General Skywalker, you want to get your Negotiator, which is an amazing ship. Uh, but I think this is a more seamless transition to your endgame fleet. And also, as soon as you get Houndstooth, throw that into either of these fleets. You don't have to wait until you have Executor. It's the best tank in the game as a ship, and it has been for like five years throw it in there you won't regret it what focusing on fleets is also going to help you do is start getting uh, zeta ability materials sooner uh, you need the executrix and at least six ships at five star it used to be just dark side ships but now it's any ships uh, these geonosians should be easy uh, front runners uh, you can also get just other galactic war store ships so be hitting those as much as you can with this green currency and i'll show that later um zeta ability materials there's there's a lot of them. It's very complex. I'm not going to go into it too deep. But you need 20 of these materials to get a Zeta ability on a character. These are some early priorities I recommend from the teams I have. Merciless Massacre with Vader make, lets them take a million turns in a row. Uh, Palpatine's Leadership gives you tons of turn meter. Makes you be able to loop uh, forever. Same thing with Emperor's Trap with Piet. His unique. You get to go forever with your Imperial Troopers. Bosk's Leadership I think is pretty great after that bounty hunter team really makes it useful and then for jolie uh that's a great jedi zeta to get early um so useful even later on it revives your entire team so as long as he survives and is an ability block you can bring back the whole team uh so those are just some great early priorities and after that you're gonna have to just think for yourself on it or watch my other videos and here's the resource management section with your various currencies. I'm super small up here because I'm going to spoon feed you with a lot of information in order for farming. Galactic War Store, uh, you want to try to clear your Galactic War every day once you unlock it, I think at like level 40. You can get three of these a day if you finish it, starting with like bigs and ships just to get your ships going. Since we're not doing Phoenix first, we don't need to worry about Zeb. Uh, Hog of the Lesser is good for Geonosian, so you might want to switch up the order there. Uh, but mainly you want ships, ships, ships here. And then next is Squad Arena. If you're lucky and you climb a little bit each day in the Squad Arena, you can get two of these shipments a day for 20 shards. 
starting with Mace and Leia for those uh, early uh, Yoda and Palpatine unlocks, Tarkin for ships, and then so on and so forth. Uh, Savage Press is going to be a one-man team later, and I'll talk about that. And then you got IG-88 or HK-47. It just depends how you're going. Uh, not super important the order after this first couple. And then Cantina Store. Um, this actually really helps moving Chopper out of this because you can get to Ahsoka Tana right away for a good Jedi. Work on Stormtrooper Han early for uh, Commander Luke. And then work on Boba Fett uh, to help with uh, ships and challenges and lots of different things. Um, also Fives. I don't really focus on the clones team as much anymore, but he's still good. And Qui-Gon Jinn is a great Jedi leader with his Omicron and Grand Arena, which I'll talk about later. Then the Guild Activity Store, this used to be slow, one of the slowest farms and most sporadic, but now it is fast. It might be your fastest place to farm characters. Like I talked about earlier, we want General Kenobi and Han Solo as your first priority. Priority number zero, because they're so important. Then we want Old Ben, Colonel Stark for the Imperial Troopers, Sunfac for Geonosian. Get some Ewoks later for unlocking C-3PO. And Darth Treya, uh, she's an amazing character, but she's just a later priority because uh, her team is a much later farm. And then we got the Fleet Arena store. Uh, you might get three to four shipments a day. Uh, your top priority should be getting the Razor Crest. You wanna check every refresh, which is every six hours this store refreshes, um, except there's a change in there somewhere, but like always check this store for that ship. Uh, you're gonna want that super early. Also gonna want Darth Vader as fast as you can. And General Grievous, um, he's a later priority for a team, but he's rare otherwise, so still try to pick him up. You also want some Geonosian ships, Empire ships, Rebel ships, Galactic Republic ships, characters. Um, it's up to you what you need. If you think you need this currency to fit in, just grab the characters, or you can spend it on Zeta materials. Uh, the Zeta materials are expensive in Endgame. It's a super good uh, buy, but try to buy useful characters first. That acceleration is going to be very helpful, and you can get like three full characters unlocked by the time you get enough Zeta materials for one Zeta. So it's up to you. You do the math. Another chock full page. We've got resource management with energy. I uh, can't dictate everything we're doing here because there's just so much. You're just going to have to screenshot and follow or come back to the video and see it. But light side, dark side battles use the same resource, which is normal energy. So you kind of want to balance these farms in order. Uh, you can do probably five to six characters or nodes a day that you're hitting. You just want to hit it for all five attempts. Uh, Imperial troopers are an early focus and then Jedi and then bounty hunters. Uh, and then later on with the like seven, eight through 12, 14 priority, you're going to get some more of those bounty hunter ships, empire ships and uh just more bounty hunters and sith finally uh then with cantina you can farm one character at a time um this you can change up the order you have a lot of flexibility now that we don't have to get um ezra or hera so you can work on old ben early to help with jedi unlocks and commander luke skywalker same with farm boy luke um feel free to switch up farm boy luke with some of the geonosians just to get on ships earlier and Geonosian Brood Alpha is definitely an ASAP character to farm. As soon as you get him, farm him, he's going to unlock the potential of these Geonosians. And then you have all these later characters for later unlocks. And showing Kersantan at the end for when we want to start working on Java. And then with Fleet Energy, um, you, you want to work on some ships early. Um, uh, just the easier ones to get. I'd probably do actually Sunfac first uh, once you can get to it. Um, TIE Fighter Pilot comes earlier in those nodes, so it's easier to get to. Uh, but you can really, I mean, it's this is the one where I think it's the least vital how you do the order. Um, you might want to use Vader's ship up. Anakin's ship is kind of just a gen general good ship. You can throw it with anything, and you're going to have Anakin worked on, so and he's great there. And we're wrapping up soon, I promise, guys. We are getting to the end. Uh, I'm just going to show some of the target non-Galactic Legend squads you'll have by the end of this. Uh, here are your beginner squads I covered earlier, um, but I'm showing Bastilid here first. And then we got Emperor Palpatine, Vader, Thrawn, or not Thrawn, uh, Tarkin, and then whoever else you have there. Their Imperial Troopers are much better in the long run than Phoenix, and uh, they're, they're, e they're easy to farm as well. It's just a little bit slow. Uh, then we got all these target squads. Uh, pause it, take a look at it. Clones. The the priority is the higher the higher the character is on this line on the page, 
they're a bigger priority. So like Jedi Knight Revan is a higher priority. Um, except the exception I would say is CLS. Commander Luke Skywalker is a higher priority than Padme. Uh, but the Shakti clone team is a lower priority now because of raid changes. General Grievous is a lower priority. Um, this Trey team is actually amazing, but you're probably going to get them a little bit later. Um, but feel free to work on them. They are not a waste at all. Uh, and then some mixed faction squads. We've got Bounty Hunters and then Starkiller. Um, Starkiller will poach Palpatine and Mara Jade uh, from their own team. So you won't. So I don't know what you'll do with Darth Vader. You might throw him with Trey or something. Uh, but the Bounty Hunter team is great as well. Another thing I wanted to touch base on that I didn't do at all in my first guide is what kind of Galactic Legend counters you'll have available if you complete everything in this guide up to that point. Um, for Jedi Master Kenobi, you can use Java or Sith Eternal Emperor. Sith Eternal Emperor is more tricky, but you can do it. Sith Eternal Emperor also can counter um, Jedi Master Luke or Rey. Rey is a bit tricky, but he dominates Jedi Master Luke. For Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you can use this team of Jedi Knight Revan, Luke, Old Ben, Hoda, and Bastila. And then Lord Vader. If you're facing Lord Vader uh, and you're only getting through this guide, it might not be the strongest Lord Vader. It might be one without Maul. So you can probably take it on well with Fennec Shan, Grief Karga, and both Mandalorians, uh, the original Bounty Hunter, and the Scoundrel, uh, which is a great counter for that. Uh, if you learn it, you're going to have to look these counters up yourself. Uh, but then what you're not going to have is you're not going to have Supreme Leader Kylo for a while to take on Java and Sith Eternal Emperor. So you want to do that. Um, if you just add S Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, and if you get Java and Sith Eternal Emperor, you'd probably be able to counter every Galactic Legend. Another new page for me, uh, this is Omicron Recommendations. Uh, Omicron materials are uh, high level abilities above Zeta that only apply to one game mode. I'm only going to recommend a few. I recommend only Grand Arena Omicrons because for the guild things, it's a minimal impact. You sometimes want to be a pal and help the guild out, uh, but the most impact you're going to have is in your own Grand Arena. Wampa and Savage Press are solo masters if you give them theirs. Uh, and then Treya is insane. She becomes a almost galactic legend with her team. And you can actually pair her with Survivor Press in 5v5 or 3v3, and it's, it's crazy. I think Qui-Gon Jinn, he has a pretty impressive Omicron as well. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but he makes his team do a ton of damage. Uh, once he dies, they all heal up, and then Anakin destroys everybody. So I just want to throw out those recommendations. I only feel comfortable recommending these four first. Do not give one to Chief Chirpa. And another thing I didn't cover in my last uh, journey guide, I thought it was long enough, but some people I think might want this extra guidance. Assault battles are uh, events that rotate, you hit, get them once a month, and you can get great rewards, you can get character shards and gear. At a high level, you get all these things. These are relic materials, Cairo techs, um, and Zeta materials. And with the teams I've talked about, you should be able to get five of these done pretty easily. Imperial Troopers, you're getting two for one. You can take out Rebel Roundup, and Force Moon. This calls for Imperial Troopers specifically. This calls for Empire. When you get Jedi Knight Luke, uh, the Ground War, which requires Jedi, is a breeze. Commander Luke Skywalker uh, waltzes through military might, and then a Palpatine lead. You're gonna have to be creative with it and look up guys, but they can take that out. Uh, the two you're gonna miss out on are the Night Sisters one and the Inquisitors one. I only recently finished the Inquisitors one, so don't feel bad. And the Night Sisters, the third level is like has been virtually impossible for several years, so don't worry about that too much either. In the penultimate slide, I want to go over a few quality of life tips. Uh, set your You can change your daily reset when your uh, stores refresh, when your day switches over. Uh, so switch it to match your schedule, uh, which will also help you get your free energy. So the default times are noon, night, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. where you are. Uh, so if you change your schedule, change it accordingly. Um, switch up the plan if there's something else you want. Like You don't have to follow this to the T, uh, but it would help. I didn't cover tons of characters in the guide, so if there's a character not shown here, it's because there's over 250 characters in the game and it's hard to talk about them all. Uh, and also, don't gear and level up everything, only the useful characters and ships that you actually need. That's all, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the rest of the stuff I have on the channel. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. See you later.